Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back to talk about some of the most underrated gems that I have in my collection. Um, and for me, an underrated gem needs to be pretty affordable. I don't know, there's just something weird about calling something that costs, you know, over $50 an underrated gem to me. Um, because once you get into a, a certain price bracket, I feel like it might be underrated, but it's not necessarily a gem because it's not something you can just like go out and buy, you know, pretty quickly. So I tried to stick with things in my collection that I think are super, super affordable and for the price, I think that they're just super underrated and they're just little gems in my collection. So anyways, I've got 12 fragrances here. I'm gonna jump right in. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna start with is, this is a Pascal Morabito fragrance. Um, this is a fragrance that I don't know that I've heard another person talk about. Um, this is Pascal Morabito Pure Pearl. Um, anytime I talk about this fragrance, I talk about how the packaging of this does not match the scent inside at all. With a name like Pure Pearl, you would expect, you know, something maybe clean, light, um, you know, like a clean, light scent. That is not this. This, if I remember correctly, this is like pear and caramel. It's a very sweet, yummy, gourmand leaning fragrance. It's so yummy, it's so good. If you love pear and if you love caramel, um, if you like gourmands, I think you would love this. It's sweet, it's warm, it's like decadent smelling. It's amazing in the cooler weather. I love this one in fall. I just love it. It's so good. It's so good. If you layer this with like a really sweet um, vanilla or if you layer it with a county fair type fragrance. So for instance, Alchemia has a, a fragrance that's literally called county fair. It's like, you know, funnel cakes and cotton candy and candied apples and all of those things. Um, I have a scent from Solstice Scents called Foxcroft Fairgrounds, and I will layer this with Fox, Foxcroft Fairgrounds, and it is amazing. This layers so well with fragrances like that in the fall, and it's just yummy. It's like a $20 bottle of perfume. If that, you might probably can even find it for in, less expensive than that. It's just such an underrated gem. I adore it. So that is the first one. That is Pascal Morabito Pure Pearl. Okay, next, this fragrance. This is a fragrance from Elizabeth Arden, and this is called True Love. And I am head over heels in love with this fragrance. Um, I've had other people buy this after seeing me talk about it and comment and say how much they absolutely love this fragrance. It's incredible. It's sweet. It's like sweet and floral, but powdery. Um, I remember I knew a girl that wore this. This was her signature in the 90s. Um, she was a year older than me in high school. Um, and I absolutely loved this perfume. I thought it was amazing back then. It hasn't retained the amazingness that it used to be in the 90s, but you, it still smells so good and you can still smell it in there. And it's funny, I was just reading a book, um, a book about perfume by Jean-Claude Alina, who was the perfumer to, or for Hermes for many years. Um, and he talks about, like, he kind of takes you through a history of perfume, which I've been saying that I want to do a video about the history of perfume. Um, he's got it condensed really nicely in that book, so I may go ahead and do that video now. Since I don't have to do a ton of research, I can just, um, you know, go talk about the things that he talks about in his book. But anyways, this was one of the fragrances that he talked about, when, the original one, um, because it's an incredible fragrance. So for Jean-Claude Elena to refer to this um, as being like one of the greats of its time, I totally see it. It's so good. And it's like $12 for a huge 3.4 ounce bottle. It's amazing. It's such a comfort fragrance and 
I cannot recommend it enough. I just think it's amazing. So anyways, that is Elizabeth Arden True Love. Okay, next, this is a fragrance that I have never heard anybody else talk about, but I love this. This was sent over to me by my beautiful friend Jacqueline. In fact, two of the fragrances that you're gonna see in this video were sent over by Jacqueline. Um, this first one is called Sirene, and this is from Vicky Teal, and this is phenomenal. Oh my gosh, this is like a 90s style floral. This legitimately transports me back to high school, which was hell for me, but this fragrance, there's something about it that is so nostalgic smelling. It's like a sweet, very, very slightly powdery, like 90s style floral. It's gorgeous. I love it. I love it so much. It reminds me a little bit of Lalique Lalique, the original Lalique. Um, it's that kind of a fragrance. It's a beautiful 90s style floral. Super, super affordable. Still smells incredibly modern, like you're not gonna smell dated or feel like you smell dated wearing this. It's just an amazing fragrance. Um, super, super underrated for for what it is. And I adore the bottle. This is like a seashell and it's got like um, kind of Venus style like statues of women on it. Really, really cool. So that is Vicky Teal Sirene. This next one, I think anytime I do like an underrated gem video, I talk about this perfume because I love this so much. This is Jennifer Lopez Still. And it's like a sweet, clean tea fragrance. It's very light, very delicate, sweet, clean skin. It's like the perfect fragrance to spray on when you get out of the shower or when you're just looking for an easy reach. Um, it lasts forever on me. This is a fragrance that um, I can get a good six or eight hours out of. Um, it's just, it's such a good one. It's such an underrated gem. It's another one that I just don't hear a ton of people talking about. Um, this and JLo Glow, I think are two incredibly underrated Jennifer Lopez fragrances. They're so, so good. So anyways, that is Jennifer Lopez still. This next one, this is a newer fragrance to my collection, but you can find this for such an amazing price. And this to me smells, number one, it smells way more expensive than it is and it just smells delicious. This is the James Bond like 007 perfume. You can find this for such an amazing price and this smells like sweet dark berries. Yeah, it smells like sweet dark berries. It's warm, it's like, I don't know, it just reminds you of like forest fruits. Warm, sweet forest fruits. This one performs way, way better in the cold weather. It's so funny, I can almost not smell it in the heat. Um, I'm still getting the berries, but what's coming out most on my skin in the heat is like this really mild, kind of light wood. But if you get this and you wear it in the winter time, it's this beautiful, sweet, dark berry fragrance. It's phenomenal. I love this perfume so much. I got a sample of it from FragranceNet first and then somebody actually sent me this bottle because I talked about how much I loved it when I got that um, sample and then somebody out there had a bottle and was like, hey, I have a bottle if you want it. And I was like, heck yes, I love it. Um, and what I love about this bottle too is it looks black. It even looks black when it's like sitting right in front of you. But as soon as you hold it up to some light, it's like a dark olive green. I love it. I love everything about this fragrance. Such an underrated little gem. Um, this is one that I would have just never even considered because it was like a Bond fragrance, but it's so good. So anyways, that is James Bond 007. Okay, next I've got a couple of vanilla fragrances that I think are super underrated. This first one, I don't think I've ever heard anybody else talk about this besides me. This is a fragrance from Camille Beckman, and this is called French Vanilla. I love this. This is a vanilla perfume, but it's got a brown sugar note in it. It's not the longest lasting fragrance in the world. You do have to reapply it quite often, but it's so worth it because um, I just saw this fragrance on sale on the Camille Beckman website for $10. So if you could get it for $10, it is 100% worth it. It's a really beautiful, sweet, yummy, gourmand vanilla. 
and they sh they make um, like layering products too. So you can get like a body cream, which I, if I didn't have a bazillion lotions, I would totally get the body cream to layer this over to see if it, you know, to see if it like layered up well and performed better that way. I love the perfume though. It's a yummy vanilla and if you can catch it on sale for $10, it's 100% worth it. So anyways, that is Camille Beckman French Vanilla. And then the other vanilla fragrance I have, this one is newer to my collection. I just picked this up recently and I am so glad that I did. This is a fragrance from La Rive and this is just called Vanilla Touch. I love this. Because it is a La Rive fragrance, it doesn't perform well. It's kind of like the Camille Beckman. It's, uh, it performs a little bit better than the Camille Beckman, but you're still gonna have to reapply this every couple hours probably. But this is like a beautiful kind of slightly powdery, kind of slightly almond smelling vanilla. Almost like it's a vanilla and with like a touch of heliotrope in it or something. It's gorgeous. If you read the reviews on Fragrantica, which, you know, some you the reviews on Fragrantica are like a hit or miss, but when I read the reviews on this, there were there were some kind of snobby people that were like, "Oh, it's crap. It's, you know, it's a crap Larie fragrance and it doesn't last long and it smells generic." And but then there are other people that smelled the same thing that I smelled, which was it's really beautiful. It's like a $5 perfume. And for being a $5 perfume, it's gorgeous. It's not like a run of the mill vanilla. It's got this really beautiful, like almost like a heliotrope kind of scent to it. Um, does it perform the best? No, but it's $5. So you can, you know, reapply it every couple hours. It's no big deal. It's really nice. It smells more expensive than it is too. I really, really love this one. So anyways, that is La Rive Vanilla Touch. This next one, this is another one that surprised me so, so much. This came, um, this came from a subscriber. So somebody sent this to me. This is a fragrance from a brand called Wild Spirit and this is called Chill. Um, you can get this brand on maybe in the Walmart stores, I don't know anymore, but probably still on walmart.com. This one is Caramel Apple and Amber. And she sent this to me back in like the fall. I wore it back when it was cold out and this performed amazingly well. Way, way better than I was expecting it to. I was fully expecting this to be like a body spray that it was just gonna wear off after a few minutes or you know, after an hour. It did not. I got a good six hours out of this. And it's beautiful. It's very straightforward. It really is like a caramel apple, ambery type fragrance. It's not like a dark amber or anything, but it's definitely like a beautiful, sweet, caramel apple kind of ambery type fragrance. It's beautiful. I love it. I think it's a super underrated gem. Um, this is another one that I think would pair beautifully with a one of those kind of country fair type fragrances or like a Fox Foxcroft Fairground, um, you know, a fragrance like that. I think it would just be beautiful. So anyways, that one is called Wild Spirit Chill. Okay, this next one, this is the other one that Jacqueline sent over to me and this really is a very underrated gem. I don't know that I've heard anybody else talk about this. When I say that though, take that with a pinch of salt because I don't, um, I don't really have time to watch any other fragrance reviewers, so I don't know if anybody else has talked about it or not. But usually, I usually people talk about it in my comment section, like the perfumes that everybody else is talking about. So I usually kind of know a little bit, and I don't know that I've ever heard anybody talk about this. This is the Guess 1981 Indigo fragrance, and this is gorgeous. It's light and delicate and a little bit tea-like. It's a little bit sweet. It's very ethereal smelling, very like wispy and light and delicate and ethereal smelling. It's gorgeous. I love it. It's not the longest lasting fragrance in the world. You definitely do have to reapply it every, I don't know, I would say every couple of hours, but I love it. It's beautiful. It performs beautifully in the heat and it's just a super underrated fragrance. Super easy to reach for. Um, it's just like that perfect hot weather fragrance, like when you don't know what to wear. It's like clean without smelling like a clean musk fragrance. It's kind of like a clean skin clean or almost like a laundry 
clean but sweet and like a touch woody in the base. It's beautiful. This one's hard to explain because it is really, it's sweet and delicate and clean and ethereal smelling and it smells beautiful on the skin. It smells better on the skin even than it does in the bottle. It's just, ugh, it's a good one. So that is Guess 1981 Indigo. This next one, I'm not gonna talk about it a whole bunch because I think I've talked about this. Like I talk about this fragrance all the time, especially in like underrated gem videos. Um, this is Kim Kardashian Pure Honey. In my opinion, this is one of the best celebrity fragrances on the market. There's something so nostalgic smelling about this. It reminds me of my childhood somehow. I have no idea what it is, but it somehow reminds me of being a very small child. And it somehow reminds me of the 80s, and I love it. It is the most beautiful honey and white floral fragrance. It's very rich smelling. It's very viscous smelling. Like you can almost smell the consistency of it. It would be, and if it had a consistency, it would be very thick and viscous, just like honey. It's sweet. The white florals are fresh, but they are blended beautifully with the honey. The white florals aren't overtaking the honey and the honey isn't overtaking the white florals. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. It's so good. And you can pick up a bottle of this for like $15. It's so good. I would never know, if somebody put this in like a fancy bottle and told me it was something expensive and niche, I would believe them. I really would. It just smells way more expensive than it really is. I love it. Um, so many people have recently been telling me that they've been layering this with other perfumes and that it's just amazing layered. Um, I've never layered it because it's just so beautiful on its own, but I am gonna start. I'm gonna try some of the layering combinations that people um, that people have told me about because gosh, it's just, it's so good. It is such an underrated gem. This is one, of, if you don't like honey and if you don't like white florals, then I would definitely skip this one. But if you're somebody that does like honey and does like white florals, oh my gosh, don't sleep on this. It is so, so good. And for the price, like I said, one of the best celebrity scents on the market, hands down. Maybe the best scent that Kim Kardashian has done. Now, granted, I haven't smelled a ton of Kim Card a ton of Kim Kardashian's perfumes, but of all of the ones I've smelled, this is by far the best. It's so good. So anyways, that is Kim Kardashian Pure Honey. Okay, this next one, this is a Burberry fragrance. Um, again, I don't know. I've never really heard anybody else talk too much about this. So I don't know if this one is actually super underrated, but in my world, it's super underrated. Um, I don't think people talk about this one enough. This is Burberry London Her. Yeah, I think it's called Burberry London Her. This is the most beautiful, sweet floral ever. There's something so happy and youthful smelling about this fragrance. It's just so bright and uplifting. It's like a bright, citrusy, light, sweet, kind of medium bodied floral. It's not like wispy, but it's not heavy in any way. It's really, really bright smelling, really, really bright and sweet and youthful and fun. Very spring-like. Um, I'll wear this any time of year though. I just absolutely love this. I've got the original formulation and this is the reformulated version. Um, I love them both. The, the original formulation is a little bit, I would say like richer smelling, but it's not so different that, you know, I think that, that I think that it's worth like tracking down the original formulation or anything. The new formulation is still really beautiful. So anyways, that is Burberry London Her. I feel like this is such an underrated little gem. And then last but not least, this is a fragrance that, oh my gosh, I have loved. And in fact, this it seems like this would be a cold weather fragrance. This is actually more of a hot weather fragrance for me because it performs way, way better in the heat. This is a fragrance from Jean-Louis Charer, and this is called Immense Pour Femme. Um, number one, I love the building. It looks like a skyscraper in New York or something. Um, it's just such a fun bottle. And the perfume inside, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It's like a slightly vintagey smelling. And when I say vintagey smelling, I mean vintage, 
vintage, like 90s vintage. It's like a slightly 90s smelling, like warm, very slightly spiced vanilla fragrance. I love it. There's something about it that kind of reminds me of like warm hay, like warm grass, but not, not green grass, like warm hay or something. Like a warm bundle of hay that's been soaked in vanilla or something like that. That's what it reminds me of. I love it. It's amazing. Performs way, way better in the heat. So I need to actually pull this one out and use it even though it's a little bit counterintuitive for me, but I just know from experience it's way better in the heat. But I love this. I picked it up off of Mercari for, not Mercari, I'm sorry. I picked this up off of FragranceNet for like $18 or something and I love it. It's such an underrated little perfume and I just think it's amazing. So that is Jean-Louis Scherer and that is called Immense Pour Femme. And that is gonna be it guys. Those are 12 fragrances from my collection that I think are super affordable, very underrated gems. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you in my next one. Bye.